Okay, for me, the gap is mostly one of timescales and the equivalence of relevant parameters estimated within ecology and paleoecology. And so if the parameters we estimate are inconsistent across fields, then we still only have general vague ideas about processes and prediction is hard, right? So prediction is done in mature sciences and we want to strive to get there. So the most pressing issues for me include training ecologists in paleoecology and training paleoecologists in ecology, actively working across fields in a non-trivial manner, something that takes time and effort in my experience, especially for conservation applications, working on understanding eco-evolutionary dynamics, because we know evolutionary processes are crucial even on shorter time scales, and putting in more effort in understanding marine ecological dynamics and the zone of ex in exchange between the terrestrial and marine realms in filling this gap. I guess my notion of what the gap is, is simply mutual ignorance. I think that paleontologists for a long time have not really grasped the dimensions of ecology. And I think that ecologists are woefully and painfully ignorant of history and the importance of history. But that said, the, the problem really is one of education. I mean, when I got my PhD eons ago, it was in a joint program in advanced ecology and evolutionary biology and in the Department of Geology at Yale. And I was expected and required to be able to master and write about questions, major questions in both fields. I think that's a hard road to hoe. I think it uh, is very challenging depending on people's backgrounds. But I really do think that mutual interaction and awareness of the dimensions of each other's science is, is the major difficulty. Uh, I think another pressing kind of issue is getting more data that can tackle that intermediate time scale. Um, and I think uh, those intermediate time scales um, uh, in part generate that paleoecological ecological gap. So I think we have you know, some understanding of patterns and processes that operate on short time scales um, that a modern ecologist study. I think we have you know, some understanding of patterns and processes on time scales that are uh, paleoecologist study, um, but I think, you know, uh, how those patterns and processes scale to those different time scales is a really big question. Do they scale? Can they scale? When do they scale? Um, and I think, you know, tackling intermediate time scales um, can help us understand how they scale or if they scale and when they scale. I think the, I think the awareness, lacking awareness is the key point here, especially on the ecology side, perhaps that, that it's rarely that people factor in these uh, long-term perspectives. It's getting better, I would say, but it's still quite rare. And it's, I think it's still a very little featured in, in the curriculum in many places. Reading the paleontological literature, I think sometimes because of this uh, limited interaction there often is, I feel that, that some of the development in ecology, some of the complexities in ecology, some of the things we have questioned in the last decades have not always factored well into paleobiology still. For example, uh, in paleological work on vegetation, where I think it's still very dominated by a bit dated views on how vegetation is simple. It's very generalized here, but, but there's a bit of that at least. So, so more interaction would be very beneficial. So I think the gap or gaps become larger when we get used to more and more specialized tools. So uh, times of when, when a person, when one person could win a Nobel prize in two fields like Marie Curie are long gone and we are not coming back there. So uh, the gap is not between only paleontology and ecology, there are many, many gaps. And so I think for bridging the gap, we need, we need a common currency but not only that, we need to be able to give change from that currency, if you will. So we need not only to bridge the gap, but to try to understand what's in the gap, why there is, why there is a gap. And for paleontology and ecology, if we were to define, many people, many people mention scales, but I think scales are only, it's, it's only one, one aspect of that. It's... Uh, to me, the gap is more in, in sort of the tools and perspectives that people use in, in different disciplines that are accessible to different disciplines. And uh, the more spe specialized 
or deeper the research gets, the more sort of far away uh, the perspectives might get. So we need interdisciplinary uh, research and we need to try to understand each other for real. And then hopefully things will get, get forward. I've been struggling um, bringing paleo content into climate change issues in the IPCC for almost three years now with, I have to admit, quite limited uh, success because, as I can tell you, the gap is in the time scale very clearly. And the greatest challenge is uh, that paleo currently has little to offer in terms of solution space. So this is a term that you very often hear in the IPCC. Um, we have to be more positive. There's all these, you know, apocalyptic scenarios and, and we have heard about those, but how can we now go into solution space? I think we really have to improve to get more on effect sizes and stuff and be less concerned, a bit less concerned about all these specialities with sampling and subsampling. And it's okay, I'm a big fan of subsampling, but you know, we need some numbers that we can then refine later on. We are a small discipline, we, we should not forget that. How many ecologists are out there and how many paleontologists are out there? So we simply cannot run project at the size that ecologists are sometimes doing, like the census of marine life, for example, that led to OBIS and all that. I think the challenge and the opportunity lay in being familiar with the important questions that are coming out of ecology, of conservation biology, and uh, figuring out how to frame our questions and make our paleontology more question driven from the basic sciences side. Um, and so I, I think that um, and, and I say it's, it's, it is, it's a great opportunity to really enhance our science, but it's also a real challenge, not just to, you know, learn ecology or be trained in it, but to keep up with what's exciting, what's on the, what's on the leading edge there, so. It's good to be interdisciplinary, but I would recommend try to, to get like a, the, the funding in the panel that you that is in your discipline. It happened to colleagues that they got rejected, although they had strong thing because they ended up then suddenly in biology. And then you have, you're really running into problems. It's hard. It's very rewarding if it gets through, but it's, it's much harder than make it tailored to one discipline. And the only way we have figured out is to have uh, actually people from strong people from different disciplines on on one proposal that does not really help uh, early career proposals like postdoctoral and phd proposals and it's it's hard to judge like i mean when when proposals come in uh, the the whether it's just putting the keyboards from different disciplines together or whether it is actually research that is interdisciplinary. And so the way we do is that we look um, whether the research questions uh, that, that are to be answered are interdisciplinary. It's not only about methods from different disciplines to be used. Uh, yeah, anyhow, so in summary, I think that at later career, interdisciplinary is easier and it's always, to me at least, it's much more rewarding than just single discipline projects. But that early career, if you want to be on the safe side, I'd say better, better not. But if you, if you want to have fun and if you really want to enjoy, then, then try, it's possible. It's, it's not impossible. Over time, I've been very successful in the oceanography panel, the biological oceanography panel in the US and done pretty well in the paleontology one. And of course, I always pitch the grants <clears throat> for one group or the other. When you're starting out, um, play by the rules and just be as creative as possible once you get the money. <laughs>